Jack of all trades, bringing you another refrigeration video. I'm going to show you uh, it's an older model KIC. Just open up the door, double door, fridge, freezer. All the piping still looks pretty good. Uh, the customer complained and said that uh, it just stopped working. If we take a look at the back here, yeah, this is why it stopped working. These uh, copper valves on here are extremely soft copper. It's basically cheap copper. And this one was just bent all the way there. And it just spewed out all the gas. Uh, so I ripped it off, ground it off again. So I'm going to heat this up, pull the pipe out, insert the valve. And then we're going to run a vacuum on it. But I saw some irregularities here. Uh, duct tape. <laughs> Some more duct tape over here and another joint over here. So we're going to have a look at that as well. And then this weird extension on this capillary tube. It looks like a shitty job. Uh, tools needed. Uh, we got the gauges up over here. And over here, this is my home built vacuum machine. This is an old 134A or one horsepower uh, compressor. I just popped uh, some valves onto the suction line. And uh, yeah, I extended this pipe up here so that it doesn't push out all its oil. And it works like a charm. I run a vacuum for about 45 minutes on it. It works quite well. So uh, let's go ahead and take the cutting torch and uh, weld the pipes on. Let's see how that goes. So I've decided to uh, not only do the valve, but just uh, pop on a new dry over here, 15 gram, just heating it up quickly. Right, so now I'm just inserting the valve, the uh, new dryer, capillary tube is connected. So before we want to spend too much time and effort on this, first thing that we want to do is we want to first Hook up our lines. I just ran a bit of gas through it just to make sure that the pipes were open. And now what we want to do is we want to start running our vacuum. So we're going to connect this up to our suction line. This is running up to the gauge, so we want to open up the gauge full, we connect it up to the fridge, and then, this is difficult doing this with one hand, there we go, and then here's our air coming out. So we're going to run like that for a while. And how close you can see that. There we go. That's going down lovely. Right, we have been running the suction for almost an hour. And this shitty camera, there we go. So now we're going to go ahead and close the tap and switch off. There we go. Right. We're going to leave it for a while just to see if the suction stays or if it's going to uh, start picking up again. That'll be the indication that there's a leak on the system. Doesn't seem like there's any movement. We're gonna leave it like that for a while. Right, so uh, we got the gas line hooked up now. Uh, I've went ahead and I've opened up the bottle. And now what we're going to do, we're going to open up the opposite side and bleed out the gas so that we don't get an airlock 
because that's going to force air back into the system and we do not want that air is bad we only want gas so we're going to go ahead and turn open the gas it's running in I'm going to plug in the uh, fridge plug There we go, it's on, it's taking the gas, we're just going to fill it up quickly. Right, as you can see I've got it charged up to about 10 psi. So we're going to let it run for a while now. I like to just feel uh, the temperature. I can feel it's quite hot here now. It's cooling down nicely. Temperature is good. Let it run and see how it plays out. And that's how you do it guys, you don't want to charge it up too much. The moment that you charge it up too much, you'll start seeing ice forming around the suction line. This line over here. Once you see ice build up, then you know you have too much gas in your system. And then you just have to start uh, taking out some gas until the frost line starts pulling back up all the way into the fridge. You only want a little bit of dampness on the pipe and then it's fine. Like and subscribe. See you guys next time.